Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy if you're brand new here. Today's video is inspired by one of your questions to talk about handbags that I am intrigued or that I am considering buying but that is not on my immediate wish list. I feel like I have so much disclaimer. Obviously, just because this is a luxury related video does not mean that I don't care about what's happening in the world right now. I obviously really care and I'm a huge, huge advocate of staying home, helping, doing your own part and really thanking all the people that are still working in the non, sorry, in the essential services area they all still have to go to work our frontline workers policemen firemen grocery baggers grocery workers pharmacy workers i'm sure i missed out on some of the other ones that i did not mention but you guys get the idea okay so i'm gonna talk about just bags from the fashion house of louis vuitton because i want to separate them into separate videos for each brand these are not quite planned purchases they're not even close but I do like them and there is a chance that if I end up seeing it hopefully in person but we don't know yet at this point because everything is closed but even online if if it pops up I might get it and see how it goes because I mean it is the reality now you only can shop online in no particular order because I just wrote whatever the first bag that I am still considering or am still really really intrigued and really Oh, I, I just I just feel like I haven't had my fair chance of trying out the bag which is the on the go tote I did try the on the go MM I filmed a review as to why it did not work out for me of course a lot of it had to do with the craftsmanship of the one that I received at the time but there is also the sizing issue and the fact that the size of that bag the MM size anyway I I knew it was smaller but I just didn't know that it would be so small that it wouldn't even fit my laptop which I only have a 13 inch laptop and I know everybody is like saying but how come other people's 13 inches is working? 13 inch is just the size of the monitor it doesn't mean that the borders and everything else is accounted for and it depends on how old the model of your computer is mine is from 2017 and I have an Air, MacBook Air so the Dimensions are different. Dimensions are different from each year, each model. The fact that it didn't fit my laptop means that it was no longer a good work bag alternative. So because I would only be using it as an actual handbag, then I felt like the weight of it and everything, the price and everything and the craftsmanship just did not um, satisfy my requirement for it, for example, or just it, it wouldn't suit my needs basically. So, I am now considering the GM size. I know, shocker. <laughs> and I, I even told myself on my resolution video that I would not buy any larger bags and that you guys should ha hold me accountable. But the thing is, I really do like the shape of the on the go. It's a classic shape and it's more structured. I do have a couple of Neverfulls already, so technically, why would I even need another tote? I guess I don't. I just really like it. I really like how it looks. I like how it looks on others. Um, unfortunately, I've never had the chance to try it on myself because we never even had one in store and the only one that I was able to get my hands on was the MM size which I had to order online as well. So we shall see. I know that it's available online right now and I know that the Escal collection is out so I'm very very curious. I do like the pastel colors a lot by looking at it but I know that I won't wear it because it just doesn't fit my color palette so most likely if I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try it in that red color with purple and pink I think that one is stunning so we shall see the second bag that I wrote down is the Louis Vuitton multi pochette accessoire at one point I actually saw it online for a few minutes and then it was gone so I kind of am mad at myself for not ordering it to try it on but at the same time I kind of want to avoid you know buying things that I'm not as sure I don't know I I'm still really intrigued about that bag because I love the idea of having different customization wearing only one versus all of them together wearing the thicker strap versus the thinner strap 
um, I mean the chain strap and then of course you get three different LCLGs at the same time so I do really like the idea I know a lot of you are a fan of it I always try to think of the pros and cons in my head just by judging on the design and just you know the material etc so I think there's a lot of pros on this bag but there are cons on this bag too which mainly are I guess the pricing is pretty up there and they're basically just all SLGs the thicker strap is really cool but it's just fabric which means that it's more comfortable but it can also wear more easily so there's all these things that are preventing me from getting it right and also the fact that that little coin purse is probably flapping around in front of you I don't know how I feel about that but I do like the cool factor of it so it's still a contender it's still something that I think about it's just one of those bags where if I can actually see it in person and if I am able to try it in person then I would know for sure whether it's like a hate or a love right now I'm just in the middle it's like 50 50. the next one is a huge one it's also one of the newer releases and it is the vanity pm I talked about it in my Q&A as well I told you guys what I liked about it and what I did not like about it at the end of the day the aesthetics itself is very very attractive to me obviously I still did not change my mind on zippered bags I normally don't favor them especially those that have two zipper pulls you have to use both hands to open and close it also for the vanity there is less structure it looks structured but it's still very squishy and can bend in a certain way depending on how you stuff it or not stuff enough so I'm kind of 50 50 on that one obviously the price point is probably the biggest con but I still really like it obviously I like the look of it I like the style of it I love how dinky it looks and I love that the chain is shorter which is good for us the shorter and more like flat busted <laughs> ladies um it's just pop it's most likely going to be the perfect dropped um crossbody on me so i am still really attracted to it i have not seen it in person it's never available online either so it's one of those again if i see it in person i might completely fall in love with it and cannot resist and would disregard all the cons that I think about and just get it so it's one of those the next one I wrote is also one of the newer releases and it's called the Pochette Grenelle this bag comes in different sizes I believe there's three sizes but I like the smallest one which is not really that small actually it looks like a really beautiful classic flap basically but LV version with EP leather and I love the colors that they came out with that bag if I were to get one I would probably go for the white just because I feel like in terms of white bags it's so hard to get a white bag that you don't worry about dirtying of course you can still scratch it and you can still get color transfer in it but AP leather in general is just a little bit more resistant and I feel like the white shade of AP leather that LV uses has a bit of a gray tone anyway I have not seen this bag in person so I don't know for sure but just judging from the Spring Street that I have you can see that it's white but the lines are grayish so I would assume that the Grenelle Pochette Grenelle will be also similar in that same leather and if it is then chances are it'll wear pretty well for an entirely white bag I'm pretty sure it came out after I got my Spring Street otherwise I would have considered the Grenelle the Pochette Grenelle instead because I really really like it and I really do like AP leather from LV um, it wears really well and um, yeah just a big fan I love the LV logo in front too and the fact that it's tone on tone just so classy so nice speaking of AP leather I kind of am missing my Alma BB and I know <laughs> I know what you guys are gonna say you're like then why did you sell it well it was just one of those things where at the time I was not wearing my Alma BB as much anymore because I have all my classic mini flaps from Chanel and I am more of a Chanel girl it's one of those bags where it fits a lot for a mini size it's very dressy looking but it can still kind of be dressed down especially if you get it in AP leather or in the canvas usually when I sell something I don't go back um, but never say never I guess it's just one of those things where if I let's say just hypothetically let's say if I'm in France or in Europe and I happen to bump into one that is perfect that I love 
then because I'm already in Europe, I'll be saving a large amount, then I might just get it again. It's one of those bags where I'm still in love with. I'm still, you know, I still really like, I still really would consider it. Um, but it's not like, you know, I must try to get it here now. Okay, the next one is a bag that I might have talked about in my past videos but not a lot and it's called the duffel bag but it's really just a bucket bag with a clasp on top. I've always loved that bag, it's so pretty, I love the shape of it, the style itself and just the construction feels very good and very um, justifiable for the price I guess but it's also in Vachetta and even though I do love my Vachetta bags, don't get me wrong, I love Vachetta I just feel like I'm kind of tired of having to take care of another Vachetta bag I know it also came in a blue leather, it didn't wow me as much So I, I do prefer the combo of the, um, uh, of the canvas, the monogram canvas with the Vachetta You know what, if the Vachetta was already pre-treated, as in like pre- Patina, like some of their bags are, such as the uh, Boite Chapeau. If it was pre-patina, it would probably push me to consider it more. The next one I wrote down is the Nano Speedy. I know that this bag has been so popular, like really, really popular lately. I really like the idea of a Nano Speedy. I know it's very dinky and I know that I will probably hate myself if I got it because I would probably not want to deal with the tiny little opening. The fact that the bag is a little smaller kind of helps though because you can't fit your whole life in it anyway but I do know that the opening is a bit tight for even my phone so it's just one of those bags where I keep seeing it on Instagram and everybody keeps getting it because it's a good price point and it's, it's a very classic um, shape and it's just very very popular right now just because I mean the mini bag trend is not going anywhere anytime soon so it's just one of those where I keep seeing it and the more I see it, even though I know that deep down I should not get it because of the reasons I just told you earlier, I still think about it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. And even though there is Vachetto on that one, the amount is very little so I feel it's a little more acceptable. Anyway, yada yada yada, you see how we go. We uh, change our minds a lot, we go back and forth. Next day you're like, no, I shouldn't get it. And then the following day you're like, no, I really still like it. I want to get it. It's one of those things. The next one is the trunk clutch. This one has been on my wish list for a while now. I probably tried it on a few times throughout the years. And when it first came out, it was a great idea. Because the Petit Mal, which is the predecessor of the trunk clutch, is just too small. I mean, it... It's just not practical at all. It's a very, very impractical bag for a very, very big price point in the six, seven thousand dollar price range. While I am okay with buying bags that don't fit a lot, I'm okay with that because I do have a couple bags that don't really fit that much, especially the round one from Chanel, which doesn't fit a phone. But with that one, the price point is still justifiable for me. And I just really like the shape, the look of it looks really cute on me, so I really don't mind that one. But the Petit Mal is just one of those where you know it doesn't fit a phone, it obviously looks amazing, craftsmanship, everything amazing, history amazing, but $6,000, or actually I should probably say $8,000 because you have to add tax to it, is not amazing <laughs> so it there's you know price point always is a factor for a lot of us me included and i don't i don't think i'm crazy enough to spend eight thousand dollars on a bag that i cannot wear that often no matter how cute it is for me two thousand dollars is acceptable for a bag that i don't wear all the time but i won't go above that you know what i mean so the trunk clutch is kind of in the similar vein. It is a bit better though because um, the flexibility, the size, everything, it will fit your phone. It'll, it'll actually fit quite a bit. I did try it on myself. I do like it a lot, but it's still $4,000. And when I see 4000 I think about Chanel. What can I buy instead from Chanel? And I obviously have you know, higher priorities with buying Chanel bags. So that's why the trunk clutch has never been something that I 
at it yet even though I do like it and I think that it's a better alternative to the Bezit Mad. All right, the last one that I wrote down is the Bleaker box. Just imagine top handle and then it's a cube instead of um, you know, like like a bag shape like that. It's basically a cube that you open from the top. It's super cute. It definitely is very heritage focus, you know, cuz LV is known for their luggages and for their trunks. So it has that vibe to it and which is why I really like it. But again, the price point and the fact that if it's close to nothing um, is one of those things where I'm like, I look at it from a distance, I love it on others. I fall in love myself too, but it's just one of those things where I cannot make myself get because I have other things that I have that I put more priority, more importance to getting. But I do like it a lot because it's one of those pieces that is so just so good looking, iconic. But what do you think about my list? Does this list resonate with you as well? Obviously, I'm, I know that it's not for everybody because I tend to go for really small bags, but even the on-the-go GM, I'm still thinking about it. I was initially not considering the GM size at all just because I knew it was a larger bag. I know that I should avoid larger bags, but I still really like it. So I'm, uh, I don't know. And especially with the Escal, the limited edition, it just makes it extra special. Price point wise, it's just a couple hundred dollars more than their regular um, reverse mono. So I feel like it's a good contender. We shall see. So anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the little chit chat. We're just talking fantasy wishlist here. Fantasy, maybe considering items from Louis Vuitton. Let me know down below what are yours and also let me know down below which other brand you want me to talk about next. I've also gotten requests before to do a self-portrait sort of, um, I guess, show and tell like of my entire self-portrait collection. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. I know that the warmer weather is coming up so I guess it, it can be something that you guys might be interested in, even though I know that we would all be wearing our favorite clothes and not going anywhere. So this is one of those tops that I got a couple years ago. On my arms I have some arm candies today. My beautiful Chanel Pearl graduated bracelet, one of my favorites. Um, honestly, you don't really need any other one. If you get one pearl bracelet from Chanel, you can wear it over and over. And today I paired it with this beautiful ring, which is a pearl ring. It's so beautiful. It has a little um, bow detail with some crystals on it. And then this pearl is, I believe it's a faux pearl, but it's a dangly pearl and it's so pretty. I got it in a size four and a half. I usually tend to get a smaller size when it's a very thin ring, but when it's a thicker ring, then I can size up. Never really opened this because I thought it was just an envelope but it turns out that this is a little cloth for your silver. So it's a polishing cloth that helps anti-tarnishing which I did not even know. Like I always thought that it was just an envelope for the card inside but it turns out it's an actual polishing cloth. This bracelet that I'm wearing which is um, one of their tennis bracelets. So this one is the larger stone one. This is in the baguette stone. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, I would really love to have you back. So please do consider subscribing. Liking this video is very important. It will really help me out. And also comment down below, say hi. And until next time, I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye guys.